Reptiles are amazing and the focus of my entire life, but something I'm interested in too, homesteading, farms, other types of animals, especially mammals and birds. So today I'm heading from the city and I'm coming to a farm and we're gonna talk about the top five best animals to start your homestead. I'm Adam, this is a farm. You're watching Wicked Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Edmonton geese. These aren't the Canada gooses that I always talk about how vicious they are. They're quite vicious, not really. They'll make a big show about it. What's really cool is the female is sitting on some eggs right now, so the male is calling out to her to try to tell her to protect the eggs. I think it's really cool because it's not something that you see with reptiles a lot. With these guys, they will raise the eggs, they will sit on them until they are incubated. They get this size, so not super big, but big enough that I wouldn't want to be chased out of here. I'd jump over a fence before taking a bite out of one of these guys. Now, their diet is different than that of a chicken. They're a bigger animal, and they're going to eat not just protein matter, but they're also gonna eat things like grasses, vegetation. They're gonna eat it out of water, which makes sense, because when you think of geese, that's what you think of, water. They're also gonna eat protein matter as well, so things like bugs and grubs and things like that, but a well-rounded diet isn't that difficult. The reason that they're number five is because they're loud and they're noisy and they don't want you to get near them and they're just kind of grumpy gooses. But with that said, the reason that they're loud or the reason that you'd want them to be loud is because they're a guard animal for your homestead. So if you want to keep your homestead kind of predator proof or at least kind of scare some animals away, having a really noisy animal like this is something that you'd want to consider. Number four ducks. Now these are Indian runner ducks, so you can buy a whole bunch of different ones and have a bunch of different ones. The reason that we have these ones on this homestead is they're like the cleanup crew. Imagine isopods in the reptile world, but the ducks of the homestead world, because they're going to take things like ticks or things like mosquito larvae and they're going to eat them. So all the things that you don't want on your property, these guys are gonna get rid of for you. What's really great about Indian runner ducks is these are not meat ducks, these are egg ducks. So if you're looking for duck eggs, these are the ones that you'd want, or one of the species, or one of the types of species that you'd want. Now we have one in the back corner over there who actually laid some eggs and is sitting on them. They'll put about one egg a day out, but you have to be careful, because if you keep them with someone like Lightbulb, the pig, the pig's gonna eat the eggs. So put them in a place where they have an area that the pig can't get to or whatever animal you're cohabiting them with or keep them by themselves. What's interesting is you notice there's no netting or roof or anything like that. And that's because these ducks don't fly just like the chickens. One of the important things to remember, obviously this is not a care guide. I do not take care for ducks. So do your research first, but always keep water. Ducks to water is a real thing. Even the ones that can't fly from puddle to puddle or lake to lake, these guys here have a small swimming pool or have a puddle or a natural pond. They're going to definitely need those as well. Number three, potbelly pigs. I think that pigs are maybe the most underrated animal. They're, we're taught that they're filthy and disgusting, but that's really not the case. Light bulb here is one of the more beautiful animals on the farm. And just simply because although he might be a little bit dirty, he's very intelligent. Pigs have a social structure similar to dogs. That's something that you wouldn't think considering they live in this. It looks like filth, it looks like slush, and that's kind of what it is. But at the same time, pigs aren't disgusting animals like you might think. This guy here, he's a little bit timid, he's a little bit afraid, but he's gonna take this right off of my hand without much to do about it. It feels so weird, by the way. There he is. Pigs like this don't get this much bigger, although they can. It looks like light bulb is a fully mature animal, and it has the tusks on the front or the top and the bottom of the mouth as well, but they're not gonna grow big like you would see with a wild pig or something like that. And some domesticated pigs don't even grow tusks at all. Now the drawback with pigs like this is they need a big space. And the big space that you give them is going to look disgusting. They're going to trample it up. It's gonna be basically mud, but a 40 by 40 pen, although it seems like a lot, you can keep things like ducks with them or different types of animals because although he looks a little bit mean and brutish, seems like a little placid guy to me. 
Number two, you had to see it coming on the list. If you're talking about farms and you're talking about homesteading, chickens are kind of a staple. And they're one of the easier ones to take care of as well. They need to be out during the day. They're a diurnal animal, but at night they're gonna go into something like a chicken coop. It's gonna keep them warm. It's gonna keep them feeling safe and safe from predation as well. Although your chicken coop and your entire area is going to be fenced in so that predators like skunks or raccoons or foxes, things like that can't get to them. They'll lay eggs as well. So what I found out is in the summer, they're gonna lay about two a day where they're only gonna lay one a day for the rest of the year. You're gonna pull these out and they're gonna be nice and warm, which was really, really cool. And these guys here, they're gonna take about 28 days from egg, from when they're laid, when they're in the incubator to becoming a chick. And then from chick to adult bird, it's not gonna take that long for them to get to be an adult anyway. So if you wanna get something that's ready to lay, or if you wanna get a chick, which is gonna be cheaper and more readily available, you're gonna have a real full-fledged chicken in no time. One of the cooler animals and also they'll just eat right around your hands and your feet and out of your hands and chickens are kind of cute except for the eye thing that they do. Number one, pygmy goats. Pygmy goats are cute and that's why they're number one. What's great about them also is they take about 15 minutes a day to take care of. So if you've got a little bit of land and you got a little bit of money to set up a pen to put hay on the ground to feed them alfalfa and things that they eat, this is kind of one of the more perfect animals that you could possibly keep and they don't get that big. This is a baby right here, so they're gonna get a little bit bigger than this. The males have horns that'll come in. You can see the little peekers coming out right here, and they're gonna start to curl where the females don't curl. So these guys are eight weeks old. They just off, well, they're on the bottle still, but they're gonna eat these cherry and grape tomatoes as well. And overall, if you're looking for a cute little animal, it doesn't take a ton of time. There's this cute. Pygmy goats. Best part about not knowing anything about farms or homesteads is nobody cares if you feed baby goats. And Oscar here loves all of this milk, almost all of this milk, in like 10 seconds. And look at his little tail too. Isn't he so cute? So anyway, this is what pygmy goats do. And then you get to wrestle a pygmy I'm gonna put you on the ground, Ernie. You chill. <laughs> See, I don't like this backing up shenanigans that you do. Okay, ready? I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready this time. All right, let's do it. In terms of size, if you've got a 10 by 10 space and you wanna put some straw on the ground, throw up a chain link fence around it with a little bit of a gate, that's basically it. Of course, make it predator proof if your area has larger predators, but otherwise you don't really have to worry about foxes or raccoons getting these like you would some of the other animals that we found on the list. So there you go. Those are the top five best animals to start your homestead, in my opinion, and my friends Rob and Monica, dh.farms on Instagram, give them a follow. Thank you guys so much for letting me do this. Play with your ducks and your geese and those tiny little goats, which are in the bed of my truck right now. If you like videos like this, please hit like and subscribe. We can do more. Let me know in the comments section below if you wanna see more animal videos like this, not about reptiles. And as always, a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. For as little as a dollar a month, you can see more pictures of baby goats that I didn't post on Instagram. You get discounts on the merch. You get videos like this early and so much more for as little as a buck a month because we do videos twice a week. That means that I'll see you on Monday or Thursday. I'll see you next week.